How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Today I'm doing something new for Still It's new for me, uh, and that is making gin. Specifically, Odin's Easy Gin. Let's have it. Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if this is what you're into guys, if you're into homemade spirits, if you want to get into homemade spirits, if you really like gin, this is probably the channel for you. Hit the subscribe button down below, I put content out every week, you won't miss anything. Alright team, so if you know me, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you probably know that my you know, passion. The reason I got into this hobby was mostly for sort of single malt and I guess whiskies in general. But I can totally see myself falling in love with gin and I know that's a little bit of a cliche in the craft spirits area but it is what it is. I love the idea of versatility about being able to put whatever you want in there. But, but, I think with something like this you need to start simple and basic, get a nice base down, and then work from there. So that's what we're doing today guys, we're making Odin's Easy Gin. The basic idea is that you macerate, you soak the botanicals in uh, the neutral spirit first, you let it soak for two weeks or a day depending on whether you're going to distill on the uh, on the botanicals or not with the botanicals in the uh, the pot and then you distill it again and um, collect at the end. Super easy, it's a super easy botanical bill, it's not complicated, there's literally three things in it. Uh, so I thought this was the perfect, the perfect recipe to get me started and then we can go from there and see what I like personally and what you guys like as well. So let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need is one litre of 43% ABV neutral spirit. Today I'm using my bird watches that I made not so long ago, but it's totally up to you guys. Uh, pick another neutral spirit if you want. And I'm going to be cutting that down with filtered water to get to that 43% ABV and one litre. Next up you need 3 grams of whole coriander seeds. Now if you're buying this stuff guys, uh, just check that it is actually whole. This does tend to be ground when you go to get it. And you want to crush this slightly. I'm using a pestle and mortar to do so. Next we have the star of the show, the juniper berries. We need 12 grams of that. Once again I'm going to crush it slightly using the pestle and mortar. Next up, Odin's recipe calls for the skin of a tangerine. I don't have one, I'm using orange. If you use orange as well guys, make sure not to get the white pith on the inside, it can go pretty bitter. Once you have all your ingredients prepared and ready, all you need to do is drop it into your 43% ABV neutral, so I can start macerating. So now we have the orange, which should be tangerine, but I don't have any. Uh, the coriander and the juniper chilling in here. Now, depending on what you're going to do when you distill, depends on how long you want to leave this stuff. So according to Odin, if you're going to distill with the botanicals in the pot, you just need to leave it for 24 hours and then have at it. If, however, you're going to strain it and then distill it, it's best to leave it for two weeks, he says, and then have it. You don't need to distill with the botanicals in the pot. So. I am going to be doing this with my little mini Chinese pot still, which I'm going to heat with gas. So I know it's pretty borderline, but I'm actually just going to give this a go, um, lobbing it all in there and see what happens. Mostly because I'm impatient and I want to do this tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, give me 24 hours guys, let this sit, I'll be back tomorrow and we can distill this thing. Alright team, it's actually been 48 hours, not 24 hours, uh, because rotavirus and kids basically, but uh, the maceration's done its thing, we've got a whole lot of colour going on now and it is starting to smell absolutely amazing. I will say it's a little bit on the citrusy side for me but it'll be interesting to see what happens you know as we distill it and whether the juniper and the coriander seed you know come out more through distillation. Uh, you've probably also noticed that we're actually outside tonight and the reason is I'm running the little Chinese pot still and the best thing I've got to run that uh, is the little hot plate on the side of my barbecue. So here's to hoping that I can run that thing cool enough to be able to run the still slow enough, but let's go find out. So like I said before guys, I decided just to dump everything into the pot still and give it a go, and I can let you know that it actually worked out pretty well. I didn't get any scorching, nothing like that, uh, so it worked well for me. Now I did not trust the uh, gaskets, the, the o-ring or whatever you want to call it that came with the still, so instead of using that I'm going to be using some flour paste uh, to get this sorted. I didn't... <laughs> So 
So alright lady guys, <coughs> that, uh, that paste is a little bit of a pain in the ass, it's a little bit messy but um, you know it's, it, it's better for me to do that than worry about the, the dodgy you know silicon gasket from China, <laughs> that is what it is. So all I have to do now is get it heating up, get the gas on and uh, get the water turned on as well. Now so here's the thing guys, so Odin suggests that you collect 10 mils uh, off the front of this for four shots or whatever you want to call it and then from there on in you collect about 400 mils which is the good stuff which is where that's where uh, the desirable flavors are and the rest you can keep collecting it apparently but the the flavor drops off quite quick quickly so what i think i'm going to do is take a little bit off for four shots at the beginning collect two 200 mil jars see if there's a difference between those mostly just out of interest and then probably do another couple of 100 mils after that just to sort of see what happens and you know give you guys a little bit of information as well let's get the gas on let's get this thing heating up and let's get the water turned on um i'm excited ready to go <laughs> So we've got it running at a constant drip now and I've already taken uh, I've already taken the four you know the four shots off so what I've noticed so far is that the four shots and the first part of the first 200 mils was very very citrusy <clears throat> almost lemon like in some ways and as it's gone on <laughs> you know all of 100 mils later it has changed into more of a rounded juniper and spice sort of flavor so i'm really interested to see how this progresses uh, you know through the rest of the run i'll keep you updated on those i'll just sort of cut in and out with a few little notes and then we'll jump back into the shed and we can talk about cutting this down to proof i'm going to aim for probably 40 45 percent and we can go from there Uh, so what I haven't noticed so far at all is any kind of scorching or burning flavors coming through So I think I think I'm getting away with this little thing this little pot still and heating it nice and gently I think I'm getting away uh, with the gas underneath and not having to worry you know about throwing the botanicals in there But um, yeah, we're not done yet <laughs> So we're now about 300 mils into the run. We're getting close to the point um, where Odin says to call it quits <clears throat> and the juniper the coriander is really starting to pick up now, which is really, really interesting. So we went citrus, sweet and juniper, and now we're getting through to the spicy sort of earthy stuff from the coriander, uh, which is very, very interesting. And at the same time, not really surprising. We know from everything we've done so far, that it, well, everything I've done so far on this channel, that different flavors sort of fraction out and boil off at different points during the run you know so it's really not that surprising i guess what it does mean that if you wanted to you could blend for flavor uh but to be honest with this kind of thing i would probably rather just edit my recipe uh, change my recipe to have more or less of something depending on how much flavor i want so now we're approaching the 400 mil mark and we're moving away from the earthy uh spice flavor and into the spicy sort of flavors if that makes sense so before it was it tasted like spices but now it's starting to almost get a little peppery heat to it as well uh, and there's more of a distinct coriander flavor rather than the earthy flavor coming through which is quite delicious as well so i'm going to collect another probably 100 mils in a couple of little jars and we'll just sort of you know see where my cut point is and what i want to add and what i don't want to do yeah i need to take two seconds to thank the patreons thanks a bunch guys you're the reason that i get to make cool stuff like this on the channel and uh, get to share it with everyone else so thanks a bunch guys i thoroughly thoroughly appreciate it and a reminder for the warehouse managers the meeting is coming up this weekend so i'll be putting a zoom link up on patreon for you guys to see all right team we're back in the shed obviously uh, and this is the beginning of the run through to the end of the run at the top end at the beginning we have yeah, bright, really citrusy, orangey, almost lemony. More juniper, sort of that full, rich, um, sweet. I, it's hard to, for me to describe juniper, actually, but that's it. <laughs> then we start to move into cardamom, but it is a, uh, a aromatic, spicy sort of cardamom. Spicy-ish cardamom that's starting to go a little bit sort of grassy or earthy, I guess. Uh, that has a weed, like a, you know, ganja, marijuana almost quality to it, which is interesting. But it's still cardamom, it's just more um, vegetal, I guess. And uh, also spicier, um, spicier as in heat spice, I guess, more like black pepper almost. And then down here... 
definitely want this, I definitely want this, I definitely want this, and this. These two I'll discuss later. So, let's uh, get these ones added in here and we'll see what the volume is. It's like after adding these three, four together. So that is almost exactly 400 mils. It's a touch under, just a little bit under 400 mils, maybe like 360, something like that. Now that we've added all this together, let me grab a teaspoon and I want to taste that. Honestly, that's quite respectable. I don't know a whole lot about gin, to be perfectly honest with you. But for me, the thing that is uh, joyful and fun about gin is that it's, I don't know if bright's the right word, because that, in some ways, uh, to me, doesn't encapsulate the spicy, earthy flavours, but it's, it's vibrant, it's clean, and it has, like, a very distinctive flavour profile, I guess. It, it's not muddy and all mixed up, do you know what I mean? This has a, a floral note to it that I kind of like, and <laughs> it's slightly, uh, slightly weed-like bit to it as well. But this starts getting into muddy, I, I just don't know quite what it is. So this to me still fits gin, even though it's going to push it on the spicy, earthy side rather than the, the bright uh, citrus side, but I think I, I want to add this. But I'm going to skip that, I'm not going to put it in. Odin, well done, thank you for uh, sharing the recipe with the community, this made it so freaking simple and approachable uh, that I didn't even have to think about it, which was great for my first gin. I guess there's nothing standout, there's nothing different, there's nothing creative about it, I guess. But that's not the point in this stuff, if I understand Odin's, you know, concept well. So, is it the best gin for me? No, probably not. Is it a damn good gin? Hell yes. And is it going to get better as it, uh, as it blends and sits? Definitely. Uh, in fact, Odin sort of suggests that, uh, I think it was something, don't quote me exactly on the numbers, but I think it was something like, uh, proof it down and let it sit for two days and it's sort of 80 to 90% there. Let it set for five to ten days, somewhere around there, and then that's sort of in its sweet spot. And then from there, we can start playing, we can start doing some different things, and I know that uh, some of you have been really hoping that I would do some, um, something a little out there and different, which I haven't done in a long time, so uh, yeah, maybe we do that with the gin too. Alright guys, so, all in all, great recipe, I would thoroughly recommend you doing this uh, for your first gin like I have. Very easy to do, easy recipe to follow, and a great result. And the ABV is 76% ABV. Anyway guys, I thoroughly enjoyed making this video. I really hope to hear from you guys and, uh, and hear what you think of this recipe if you've made it before or some other recipes that you like for gin. Uh, maybe throw some ideas my way for something a little bit different we can do with the next one. That would be really awesome to hear as well. Anyway guys, if you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it and you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button down below. And if you want to know how to help the channel out and you're not quite sure how to do it, the first thing you can do is share this video with other people that you think might like it. The second thing you can do is check the merch out in the bar below the videos if you're in America. Uh, if not, if that's not showing up for you, there is a link for the... Uh, the shirts down in the description. And the last thing you can do is if you really find these videos valuable, you can go and check out Patreon for me. Uh, there'll be a link down in the description for that as well. All right, guys, I gotta get out of here. Thanks for hanging out. Keep on chasing the craft, guys. See ya.